Okay. Um, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the third installment of uh, what we're now calling uh, Gary Technologies Building Fluency webinar series. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone back and <clears throat> let's get started. Um, the first thing uh, like we've been doing for every th one of these webinars is um, let's get DP open. So locate your uh, digital project icon on your desktop and um, double click and once that's started up um, I want you to also go over to your uh, quick start model open that up and hopefully you followed along last week so you should have uh, a file called my first digital project underscore and then your name um, that we started from last week so um, once that, and once that's started, uh, what you want to do is take that file, right, and like we've looked at before, pull it over to your uh, program and then drop it in. So I already have it open here. Um, before we get started, I uh, want to um, give a short introduction. So this is our uh, Gary Technologies Billing Fluency. Um, it's now uh, been rebranded as the Billing Fluency webinar. Um, this third installment is about creating BIM walls and openings with Digital Project View One R Four. Um, again, these these are these introductory uh, webinars are basically providing everyone attending a starting point. Um, exploring the rest of Visual Project. Uh, we're recording this, so it's going to be putting it's being put up on YouTube um, for everyone to view after uh, the session is over. But of course, following along uh, with the live recording helps. Um, it's conducted as a, basically a classroom format, um, so we're not doing lengthy presentations of PowerPoint and such. We're showing live models um, and we're building things from scratch to show you exactly how it works within digital project on um, live demonstrations um, and we're concentrating on building a, a BIM, BIM models and digital project and following the this series um, of eight webinars um, we're gonna have further uh, we're gonna have further sessions um, myself uh, my name is Nuri Miller uh, is I'll be hosting these first eight. Um, following that, um, coming into the next year, we'll be having sessions um, possibly with myself and with many other people um, throughout Gary Technologies. So the goals for this webinar, um, we're going to be finishing up what we started last week uh, with the structural um, model uh, using the architecture and structures workbench. We're going to be building parametric BIM beams and slabs. Uh, last week we set up a lot of the uh, construction geometry, driving geometry, and um, and now we're, we're going to construct some beams and slabs. Uh, and then we're going to get very quickly into BIM walls, uh, BIM wall elements, um, variety, can, uh, flat and curved elements. Um, and then we're going to get into placing doors and windows uh, and show how quick and easy it can be to just place a uh, door window even into a curved wall um, and how that works. And then finally we're going to generate a schedule from those elements. Um, we're going to do a quick door schedule and we're also going to show how that door schedule is interactive. So once you generate the schedule, which um, uh, comes out as an Excel document, uh, if you alter the document, um, you can then push those changes to the model and have the model update automatically based on the changes done to the schedule. And we'll look at a little more how that, how that, um, how that works with Excel data sheets um, and digital project. So um, you can submit your questions during the webinar. Um, following the webinar. If you want to submit any questions, uh, we're happy to answer. 
Uh, you can send them to knowledge at uh, gtglobal.com. And with that, uh, let's start finishing up the structure we did last week and start uh, building walls and doors and windows. All right, let's get started. So hopefully you've got digital project open and you've um, opened up what we've built from last week. Which again, if you wanted to see the full model built, you can you can go to the quick start model and take a look at my first digital project, and that's going to show you the whole model built um, in that example. So um, I just want to recap a little bit uh, what we covered last week because at the end we were rushing a little bit, and I wanted to make sure people understood what we had gone through. Um, basically, we built an outline sketch, and we had used that outline sketch to uh, drive these vertical lines. And these vertical lines ended up driving a polyline that traces the top of the roof. And then we used that to create a fill surface. And that fill surface um, is one of a variety of surface types that you can you can uh, create a digital project. Um, other ones include uh, lofting, if you're familiar with other programs. Um, in digital project, it's called multi-section surface. So there's a variety of, you know, this is uh, this is the fill tool, but there's a variety of other of other surface tools available. And then we brought in the the grid and partition sketches, and I showed you how we connect. We can bring those, copy paste those in, and then connect them to our original perimeter sketch. So that if we change that, it should then change all the uh, the um, sketches that we brought in live. <clears throat> and then um, we, from the planes that we created, um, we created a, we have our XY plane, and we also created a plane that uh, that is at the peak of our roof. And that plane, um, from that plane, we created uh, grid levels, a ground plane, and a roof peak level. So those are our horizontal levels um, to which we're connecting much of our model geometry. And then, um, and then we have our our plan grids which are the, the plan, um, well, you could say column grids in this case. Um, and essentially, uh, these are our, our plan directions, in this case, east-west. And we separate them out east-west and then our north-south. And based on that, we then create an intersection grid. And we um, we automatically and very quickly created this grid of points, um, which are now named based on their intersection location. So this, this can be a very strong tool for locating elements um, based upon these. Uh, if we've created, column, we've created columns now, located those points, we can go back later on and find out which columns are using which points. And from that, we know exactly where they're, where each column is located. So then we then we made um, we created a set of seven columns here and we were able to link them all to this surface um, so that based on the uh, size of this the size and, and shape of this surface the, the columns will will change and alter in um, in their height. So um, now that we've quickly reviewed what we did last week, I want to um, I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to create a slab. Now we're going to create just kind of a standard slab a little in a little bit. Um, but what I want to do is use this roof surface to create a slab. And you can you can actually use um, you can use curved surfaces to create slabs. Um, 
But this is kind of